Hello mortals. Humanity has significantly advanced itself over the past couple of centuries, with fancy chatbots doing our philosophy essays, to air purifying headphones. And yet we lack the technology required to make us a multi-planetary civilization, the one requirement to dramatically increase our survival chances. In the immense vastness of space, there are numerous threats posed to life on Earth, some close to home and visible like our sun itself, others having already occurred long ago but taking time to traverse space and time like a supernova, or even other yet unknown hypothetical doomsday scenarios like Cosmic Fruit Ninja. Let's explore the tier list of the existential threats to humanity, specifically the ones that come from the deep void. Thanks to Ground News for sponsoring this video. Rogue Planet. Either formed and ejected early into a star's life or having been a failed clump of mass too small even to be considered a brown dwarf, rogue planets roam the galaxy in the billions or even maybe trillions. They will never know the warmth of being close to a star, unless, of course, it made its way toward our solar system. No matter its mass, a collision with the Earth would be devastating to the trout population. However, the much more likely and interesting scenario is that of a close flyby in the inner solar system. If, say a large super-Earth took the path of Oumuamua, it would appear as a bright star, rivaling even Venus at its closest approach. As it got closer, the Earth would be tugged towards the Sun, forever shifting its orbit. If it were a Jovian mass object, it might even eject the Earth out of the solar system completely. All of these scenarios are dependent on the mass of the rogue planet and the positioning of the Earth during the flyby. Such an encounter is very unlikely however, especially since it wouldn't be that hard to spot a long time beforehand. Hopefully we don't notice an eye in the middle of it. F tier. Rogue black holes. If a stellar black hole only as much as grazed the solar system, it would throw all the orbits out of whack. But that would be incredibly unlikely, and we would also detect the gravitational lensing of such an object centuries before it arrived to threaten us. But the real threat would rather come from the smaller primordial black holes that may have formed shortly after the Big Bang. Their mass may vary from slightly more than the Planck mass, to much more than that of the Earth. However because of Hawking radiation, black holes with a mass of that of the Earth must have decayed by now. Thus the possibility of tiny almost indiscernible black holes ruining our day is not very high. Quantum black holes may be evaporating constantly as cosmic rays, but thankfully no imminent spaghettification for us. F tier. Andromeda Collision. Even though Andromeda is twice the diameter of the Milky Way, they both have roughly the same mass, on the same order of magnitude of 1 trillion suns. Thus once they collide in 4.5 billion years, they will combine into one much larger elliptical galaxy. It is incredibly unlikely that any stars would collide with each other in this merger, a process that would take millions of years. Based on current calculations scientists predict a 50% chance that in a merged galaxy, the solar system will be swept out three times farther from the galactic core than its current distance. They also predict a 12% chance that the solar system will be ejected from the new galaxy entirely. Even if that were to happen, such an event would be harmless to our system, unless it gets swung directly into the central supermassive black hole. D tier. Extraterrestrial Super Pathogen. Panspermia is the idea that microscopic life could survive and propagate through space using asteroids and other space objects. Though this hypothesis has some merits and troubles, we're here for the destruction of life, not its inception. A small asteroid arrives and hits the Earth and makes headlines for like two days thanks to the cool fireball that was visible. Unbeknownst to all life, it contains a deadly pathogen that has ravaged much of life across the stars a parasite feeding off the success of countless species across countless planets. This however relies on the assumption that such a pathogen is even compatible with our biology enough to infect us. The assumption is that this pathogen is related to the spores that brought life to Earth, allowing it to infect our biology. If that is the case, then it may not be too alien for us to respond to it, whether it be our immune system or our medical system. It still may pose a problem and cause a pandemic, or we could end up with the common cold from space. However, there is a slim chance of malicious intelligence behind it. D tier. Ultra-relativistic electron beam. Electrons are incredibly light particles with a negative electric charge. Yet our little green pals have figured out the secret that humans know well. Yes, that's right, throwing things very hard. In doing so, the problems associated with an electron beam are solved. 
A very long particle accelerator is used to create an electron beam traveling at just below the speed of light. Thanks to the time dilation experienced by the beam, the negatively charged electrons will not repel each other and will maintain their beam shape by the time they reach Earth. Once it does reach Earth, all life will have its DNA irreparably damaged, rendering all life sterile. From tens of light years away, an entire ecosystem is lost. And now the civilization that built the big particle accelerator can enjoy the spoils of war, a severe economic downturn as all of its resources were poured into building and firing a big cannon. Let's just not anger type 2 civilizations. C tier. AI Nano Swarms. Building things requires materials to be mined and processed, and what are the best rocks to mine? Correct, entire planets. To solve this issue, an alien civilization created an AI to operate swarms of self-replicating nanobots without a Boolean failsafe, and now entire planets have been eaten by the ever-expanding swarms. Rather than sending out a vast sea of little robots, only a small handful is needed to begin the replication process. With a fun little thing called exponential growth, the Earth goes from being relatively fine to having seas of dark waves engulfing entire cities, and no chance nukes can stop them. Soon afterward, all of humanity is gone and the Earth's mass is devoured with none left to defend it. Let's just hope that the moral compass of aliens has them exclude populated systems from their interstellar mining expeditions. C tier. Star Laser Weapon. Stars are the largest energy source in a stellar system, so it is no surprise that harnessing that power is crucial for a species' technological development. One way to harness this power is using a Dyson Swarm, a vast collection of satellites orbiting it. This energy can be put to many different uses, but the use that interests us is focusing a star's energy into a point. With what is essentially a bunch of mirrors, the swarm focuses the intense radiation in one direction, and this glorified microwave gun travels at the speed of light to cook the Earth well done. Unless humanity somehow knew in advance, there would be no warning, no way to see it due to its speed. One day the Earth would simply be incinerated. Check this Kurzgesagt video for a more in-depth explanation. And for the aliens, the super weapon is both a protection device and a way to harness energy. A species capable of this act would potentially even be multi-stellar. C tier. Before we get to the higher tiers of cosmic danger, one particularly severe S tier risk threatens civilization. The human predisposition to bias. You might think you are more immune to it than others, but the moment human news stations start talking about the dangers of AI, you will be quick to forget the teachings of Skynet. That's why, today's sponsor, Ground News, provides you with clarity and access to quality information. Ground News, developed by an ex-NASA engineer, is both a website and an app aimed at liberating users from echo chambers, ensuring they stay accurately informed about global happenings. This platform aggregates related news articles, allowing users to conveniently assess the political leaning, ownership, and factual accuracy of the sources covering these stories. Take a look at this story regarding AI. There are 53 articles about this and most are coming from center and left sources, but you can scroll down here and filter how you want to view the data. You can get some bias insight, such as here where the left emphasizes the advances and promise of generative AI, while the center and the right express skepticism and the need for further proof of its value. Ground News also uses three different news monitoring organizations to rate the reliability of a source as high, mixed, or low in factuality. Check out the link in the description, ground.news slash science file to get 40% off their unlimited vantage plan or subscribe to the pro plan for just $1 per month. It's about time we have a smart and data-driven way to read the news. And now back to the cosmic horrors. Vacuum decay. We like to think that the empty void of space is stable, it may be scary but at least it doesn't change. Except when it does. There is a chance that the energy state of the vacuum is not a true vacuum. Think of it like a roller coaster that got stuck on the second lowest drop. It may be currently stable, but once given enough energy, it will go to the lowest drop reaching the bottom. Given enough energy, and assuming we are in this semi-stable energy state, the new energy state would spread, expanding at the speed of light in all directions. In this bubble, the laws of physics are different. There is no way of knowing if this has already happened as information spreads as fast as the expansion. It could be happening right now, Alpha Centauri could be gone and we would only have four years left. 
Or it could happen 13 billion light years away and nothing happens as the universe expands faster than the bubble. B tier. Strange matter. Neutron stars are the collapsed cores of supergiant stars that were not massive enough to become black holes. Instead, a mass of 1 to 2 suns is compressed into a diameter of 11 kilometers, comparable to the width of a city. That density causes protons and electrons to fuse into neutrons. At the center of these stars, the pressure is so great that the neutrons could condense further into quark matter made of strange quarks. This hypothetical state of matter could be the ground state of matter. Similar to vacuum decay, it is hypothesized that when strange matter comes into contact with regular matter, it forces the normal matter to turn into its super-stable state. Neutron stars could potentially spew out strangelets during collisions with other stars. Drifting through space, they may eventually contact a planet or a star, spreading the strangeness. Nothing could be done if such a particle came into contact with the Earth. We would irreversibly be turned into a super-stable state of matter. Essentially a nano-swarm but on steroids. B-tier. Cosmic Strings. When the universe expanded, hypothetical wrinkles in the fabric of space-time that were mere centimeters had been stretched to millions and billions of light years. As time has passed, some of these cosmic strings have been ironed out to be smaller and smaller. Still, they remain, and as we know from Einstein, gravity is caused by the geometry of space-time. Every couple hundred meters of cosmic string would be equivalent to the mass of Mars. It would not take a very long cosmic string to simply cut the Earth in half if it decided to take a walk through the solar system. Recently there has been evidence to support their existence in the form of a strange-looking galaxy that suggests a cosmic string could be bending light as it travels towards our instruments. If proven to exist, we might find ourselves in the middle of a cosmic fruit ninja game. B-tier. Relativistic Missile. Remember electron beams? How about instead, we build and fire a lot of big sticks. An alien race looking to eradicate us from far away may consider launching multiple kinetic projectiles at us. Using nuclear explosions or similar to propel itself, missiles reach a significant portion of the speed of light. Large shields protect it from interstellar dust that may damage the missile on its journey to unsuspecting apes. After decades of travel, they arrive and upon contact with the atmosphere, they disintegrate, transferring the kinetic energy to the blanket above us. First, the thermal energy incinerates all that it sees, and then the massive shock waves hit. Even if a few missiles didn't make the trip thanks to space debris, those that made it are more than enough to end human civilization, is what I would say if the green aliens hadn't given the task of calculating the trajectory decades into the future to physics undergrads. A tier. Supernovas and gamma ray bursts. Of course big explosions are at the top of the list. These are the largest explosions in the universe caused by the death of the largest stars and the collision of stellar objects. The intense radiation would devastate life on Earth if one were to occur closer than 100 light years. There is some evidence that a supernova may have caused the mass extinction at the end of the Devonian 360 million years ago. A star 65 light years away probably destroyed 70% of invertebrate species. Fortunately for us, no star within 1,000 light years is expected to explode for at least a few centuries. The closest candidate is 154 light years away, a binary system of a white dwarf and a main sequence star, which is not expected to go nova until the star enters its red giant stage. Even if it were to go nova now, its effects would be minor to the biosphere, as the magnetosphere and upper atmosphere absorb most of the cosmic rays. There is however another form of nova that could cause the sterilization of the Earth. When two neutron stars or black holes collide, they explode in a kilonova leaving behind a black hole with an intense magnetic field. This collects and accelerates the particles left behind into two cones coming out at the poles, a gamma-ray burst. There are currently no known GRBs in the Milky Way, but there is a 50% chance that a GRB within 2 kiloparsecs could have caused another one of the mass extinctions during the past 500 million years. If one were to occur in the Milky Way pointing at us, we would, as the kids say, straight up not have a good time. A tier. Asteroids and comets. I mean can you really be surprised? The only entry that was confirmed to have caused a mass extinction is the one ranked the highest. As the planets formed and their orbits stabilized, debris remained from failed planets and other random material that never got the chance to form anything coherent. Close to the Sun, 
Asteroids made of metals and rock remained in orbit in the asteroid belt as well as scattered around the solar system. Farther away lie the comets, similar to asteroids but with a fresh scoop of ice. Some of these interplanetary objects have orbits that pass near enough to Earth to be classified as potentially hazardous objects, of which there are 2,304. These objects have an orbit that takes them less than 19.5 lunar distances as well as a size larger than 140 meters. 17 are not able to be excluded from being threats in the next 100 years. These are only the threats that have been identified, and as the 18-meter Chelyabinsk meteor proved, we can be blindsided. NASA's DART mission is just the start of humanity's attempt to ensure that if and when another threat occurs, whether endangering a city, country, or continent, preparations to identify and respond will be ready. Unfortunately for mankind, nature may not wait for us to be ready, and as the dinosaurs found out, complacency is fatal. Our defense plans seem good on paper, but they've yet to be tested against a city-sized asteroid. S-tier. There are many threats to human existence, both self-inflicted and from outside. Cosmic threats are dangerous not because of the ease with which they can eliminate us but rather because of their intangibility to day-to-day -day life. It is easy to forget the world's fragility, but we must not fail to prepare. It is necessary for the survival of all, and if you won't take the necessary steps, I'll do that myself. Evil interdimensional chickens again, believe it or not. S-tier.